One, one issue we've seen in the cryptocurrency world, of course, is the issue of scalability with blockchains. Um, and you talked about the intranet and and one of, the, one of the things that strikes me is how much of an issue are we going to have with the interoperability yeah. of blockchains in banks? So, you know, if, if one bank says, hey, I'm using this, another says I'm using this, and, yeah. and they don't work, is that going to be a big challenge? It's, it's still, I, I like the, the comparison with the internet. I think we're still in the face of AOL because it's, <laughs> uh, for the banks, it's more a closed ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a discussion 20 years ago with banks, should I put my e-banking in, in, a, in a more secured AOL or the other providers that's more secure on the public internet. I think we will go through the same discussion with banks that you see more private networks that don't have that scalability issue um, and, and, and try to, but you know, that's, there's a limitation. Limitation is that, as I mentioned before, if there are new ecosystem coming up that you have to team up with other industries, you're still locked in your existing environment. From that perspective, I would say, if you go into the public environment, scalability, performance and cost of transaction is pretty high. And uh, this is the reason why I would say the game or the race who will be the leading technology is still open. I think we are still in Internet 1.0. And we, we know at that time you know, that the leaders showed up at, um, I would say, Internet 2.0. And uh, so it's still opportunity for startup coming up with uh, um, game changing technology to overcome those scale volume and, and cost issues. The big difference between the internet and blockchain, the internet was largely not for profit in terms of how it was engineered and, and the people working on the early internet. When we're talking about blockchain, there are so many venture capitalists, yeah. big businesses involved. Does that alter the type of blockchain we have? No, and it's whether a, it's fit for purpose? It's, it's, a, it's a good question because at the end, I had a discussion uh, over the weekend at the DLD conference in, in, in Munich on blockchain crypto killing venture capital. And uh, my, my answer that, um, is, is that I think if you look at the different kind of venture capital, the, inter, uh, the initial coin offerings gives you uh, access to an average 30, 40 million of capital that is really hard to get today. So it's kind of democratization of, uh, of capital and you see more venture capital firm more providing uh, seed funding to get to the ICO. And then there, there will still be venture capital firms out there to um, uh, provide funding for the larger tickets. So that has already an uh, impact on, on the structure in the venture capital firm and um, the market play have to adjust, have to think about uh, where's the needs, uh, where you want to play. Just to build on Oliver's very good comment, yeah. I think the power of this technology ultimately is in, it is in its ability to democratize and decentralize access to finance. And so while there is certainly a period right now where we're going to see some big winners emerge, down the road a bit, the beauty of this technology is it will open up many of the resources that have previously yeah. been limited to a relatively small ecosystem of venture capitalists and entrepreneurs and make those resources available on a much broader basis. And it's, it's a huge catalyst. Now, if you look at last year, 4.6 billion um, through ICO invested in startups. It was factor five higher than the equity part. So you can see that access to capital uh, is, is much easier. And then, you know, the whole catalyst, another catalyst, um, as you mentioned, is the, the, the open source. You utilize a community to develop the technology. And that is even uh, an accelerator of the development and speed from that perspective. So um, something that the previous years we didn't see. No? I, I think the amount of capital is now going into uh, the blockchain technology. And then the other thing that you mentioned is, I think that we have to stress is, with Facebook, Google, we saw a very centralized business model coming up. We are moving in a totally different phase now with decentralized business model that, that there's a direct um, a relationship between the buyer and seller. Uh, uh, and, and, and so that will sim simplify the whole business. The key question will be then uh, the existing players, how they can change and adapt to the new setup. No? So uh, that's something that I can see already. Right. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.